Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in with team number 7769, The Crew, here at the first in Michigan state championship event. The Crew made it to Fimstein last year. They won two district events already this year, and they're looking for more here at this year's edition of the Michigan state championship. This robot, it's got a great intake, a consistent shooter, high-powered autons, a trap mechanism, and so much more to uncover here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Quinn, why don't you get us started with the note path for this robot? Show us how does your robot work? All right, so we have a ground intake here with four really big rollers. Intake like this, goes into our jukebox here, has photo eye cameras here. The idea behind them is that we don't want this falling too far up, we don't want this getting launched out. So we also want to get this in there. So the idea is that this entire front part of the robot is completely controlled by these photo eyes. When they don't see anything, this is just intaking, and so is this. But when both of them are activated, we're going to be trying to spin it out here, but still trying to spit out down here as well. But when we're in this like sweet spot, like right here, where we only have this one front photo eye activated, uh, this right here is when it'll just completely stop and it'll be ready to shoot. Great automation crew. Quinn, why don't you keep going through the, shoot, uh, the, the note path into the shooter? What does that look like mechanically speaking? All right, so we have a roller here that keeps it in place. And we also have two sets of flywheels here that fire out this way. And then we have for our amp scoring, we shoot out this way when we raise up the elevator. Yeah. This is our basically our basic shot. Right now, it uh, it uses a pose estimation basically to find what speed, or not speed anymore, but we used to have that, but what angle it should be at. So right now it thinks it's at like, as seen uh, pose estimation, it's like at zero zero, which is really far away from the speakers. So it's gonna be at like our max angle basically. But we got a bunch of basically just data that we found from a lot of different angles uh, and distances. And we basically put those angles into like one big data table. Well, not really that big, but uh, one data table. And then we use uh, basically a linear graph to find what angle the shooter should be at for the distance that it's at with the line. Very cool. Leah and Mark, do you just want to take us through the trap mechanism, the climbing? What does that look like for the curve? So the track me trap mechanism works with our three-stage elevator here from ThriftyBot. So we have our first hooks on here. Um, and so basically, if I can come over here and help show you guys, the elevator raises up, we run into the chain and it brings it down. And so the chain gets pushed on these um, we call them flappy hooks. They have a uh, constant force spring here. It brings the chain down and latches on like that. And what that does is it enables us to extend higher. And so our elevator goes up into the trap position. So that's where we would lock into the, um, the chain at first. And then you can see as it comes down, the path would hit these and these guys would go back and it would latch onto that. So now we're stuck on the chain and then we go up again for our trap position. And you can see this guy is angled. And so basically we use this handoff roller right here to slowly um, kind of feed out the note into the trap. And so it has a little bit of an arc onto it, pushing it down into the trap. Push it right here. And then it the exact same Yeah, this is the amp position the same output mechanism going the opposite way that it fed in. We have another buddy hang hook right here. This is so that we can get high up on the chain all the way to the side, allowing us to make room for other robots to climb onto there. I really like that addition to the buddy climb uh, there. 
not something you see a lot of teams think about. So well yeah. done there. You want to take us through like the strategy? What was the design looking like? Uh, what decisions did you make to decide how you wanted to shoot, how you pivot to shoot? Um, so you can shoot for more than just one position. Um, well, we knew we wanted to do um, like under bumper type of thing. So based on that, we built um, a, a, like a, a shooter that would be able to pick it up, keep it in there, stay still. And then based on uh, our limelight, we wanted to make sure that it was able to shoot based on um, the chip and everything. Very cool. Kai, was there anything else programming wise you wanted to add on to what your team does that really makes it so there's an automation powerhouse really here. Uh, I think one of the biggest helps is that uh, we use state-based programming. And so every basically position of the robot is a state. We have states for prepping to shoot the speaker for the amp. And in those states, it just constantly is gonna set the robot to what it needs to be doing. And I think that's really cool because it lets us do a lot of really easy transitions. Like for instance, every time we scored or shot that robot, it always came back down and it always went back to intaking. And that's something that states is, like using states is really good for. Uh, another thing is that it goes really nicely with the LEDs. So uh, I don't know if a lot of people are seeing that, but the LEDs would basically change depending on the state we're in. Like when it didn't have any known in it, it would be flashing yellow, but now it's a solid green. And then depending on what type of thing we're doing, like for shooting, it'll slowly fill up red until it's ready to shoot. And then when it is at that state, it'll just turn to this like kind of flame animation. And I think that's really cool. Great automation. Well done, crew. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. My name is James here, checking in with team number 7769 at the Michigan State Championship. Thank you for watching this Behind the Bumpers. Have a great day. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.